Hello, this is Lance Croy, and as many of you know, I'm going through some of my favorite books that have caused me to plant and pastor house churches. Today, we're going to be looking at a book by Edith Schaefer. There's her there with her husband, Francis Schaefer. Now, many of you know, Francis became a looming figure within evangelical Christianity. Whether it was because of his apologetical video series that he distributed, or his prescient views on the church's engagement with the postmodern culture, or even his alignment with conservative issues at the time, Francis became very famous very fast. And the tragedy of all of that is sometimes the works of Edith get lost behind the large shadow of her husband. And so today I want to elevate the works of Edith Schaefer in her own words. The book we're going to be looking at is called Lee Aubrey. It was actually the first book Edith ever wrote back in 1969. She went on to write about 18 other books, including a couple children's books, but it really does a fantastic job chronicling the story of Lee Aubrey or the shelter that they began in Switzerland. It all started in 1948 when Francis was pastoring a church in St. Louis. Edith and their three daughters were all living in a very large home, a 13 bedroom home and living a very comfortable life in the States, but they decided to let go of that life and to move to Switzerland to become missionaries. While in Switzerland, Francis did what he normally did. He was an ordained pastor. He would go to various churches and preach a Sunday message. But as Edith began to meet more townspeople, or she began to meet more college students who were there on holiday, she began to realize that where they were at in their worldview had no room for the supernatural. Many people she encountered had been inundated in college by a nihilistic, existentialist, or humanistic worldview that had no room for God. And so Edith wanted to supplement the Sunday sermons to have people over their home during the week so they could create an environment where they can engage in these issues and they can talk about where they were at and discuss their own presuppositions or philosophies. This is how she words it. She says, an invitation was given for this Thursday night for an informal evening of conversation and tea. Bring any questions you might have concerning religion or the Bible or just anything that troubles you. That was the first of many such nights. The only change is being that we soon dropped the custom of starting with slides because everyone wanted more time for questions. And that's what I love about the book, Lee Aubrey, is it really does discuss Edith Schaefer's ideas to move away from a more formalized, professional-driven church model where Francis would be the only one speaking or preaching and teaching. Like she said, we had to move away from slides. This is not professorial. This is not a college classroom. For God's sakes, these people were there on holiday. They didn't want homework, busy work. But she created this informal, communal, relational gathering where more and more work could be done sitting around the dinner table or sitting in a semicircle around the fire and just openly, honestly discussing their troubles with the Bible or their religious upbringing or even sharing whatever troubles that they were going through. Edith imbued that space to absolutely create a safe shelter for them to share. All of them could participate. And that's what I love about Edith Schaefer's works. It reminds me of what you see in the first churches of the Bible. Paul writes to the Corinthians, one, two, or three people should speak at a time and done in order, but then the rest can weigh what is being said. And that's what Francis really got great at doing. He was able to weigh what people were saying, but he was also able to respectfully disagree within the dialogue. He became masterful at facilitating conversation where he wouldn't open a Bible and show them a proof text. He would rather give them the meta narrative of creation, fall, and redemption and give these big themes that we all long for and yearn for. And because Edith Schaefer loved people so much, she always viewed that everyone was made in the image of God, that by her love and care and support of them, they could healthily disagree with them because it didn't matter their opinion. They wanted to create a space where they could be heard, where they could think out loud, where people can look them in the eye and they can talk about truth. And as you saw, more people 
loved it. They wanted more time for questions because they had this respectful dialogue, this communal and relational space that was safe for them to share. And finally, Edith knew that if they did that, there would be an absolute outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Edith talks about how she was dedicated to prayer for these people that came through and lived at Liabri. She said, this is not the prayer I'm talking about when your head hits the pillow right before you go to sleep at night. She would schedule 30 minutes to an hour of prayer each and every day. They had a prayer room in the house where they had all of the requests of every person who went through there, even atheists asking to be prayed for, for issues, and she would pray for them. People who were staying there as well could sign up and go there and they could be prayed for. She dedicated herself to prayer because she wanted to see the supernatural pervade and invade their lives. And that's what she ultimately writes about. This is the underlying theme of her work. It's not for her own glory. It's to show just how the Holy Spirit works. She says, it seemed to us that so much of Christianity at the time was being spread by advertising designed to put across something. And there were very little recognition of the existence of the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Our guests at Leabri were given, not by us, but by God's answers to prayer, a demonstration that God exists. Or to use Francis Schaeffer's words, the God who is there. But it all began because Edith Schaefer created a safe shelter for people to share and the Holy Spirit showed up. Think about our churches today in America where more and more students and college people of that generation are not showing up. But yet think of the format. It's so formalized. It programs the Holy Spirit out of it. It's three songs announcements, prayer, and a message. And it's one figurehead, one person giving this monologue, doing all of the talking rather than a space where everyone can sit around and have their voice heard. This next generation who can share their thoughts to the world by just sending a tweet or by posting something on Reddit or by joining a server on Discord, why are we expecting them to sit passively in the traditional conventional church setting? We need to create more spaces where all of their honest thoughts can be shared. More spaces where we can sit around and we can respectfully dialogue with each other about ideas we disagree with. Look at our culture today. We cannot have any civil discussion about any big societal issue. It all turns into hate speech and silences the debate. We need to create more spaces that have people loving you, caring for you, feeding you, nourishing you, and the Holy Spirit working around more cups of tea and dessert. That's what Edith's legacy was. So many theologians and apologists went to Liabri, went and stayed at the shelter. Os Guinness is a great example. He spent three years with them. And while he disagrees so much like other philosophers on Francis's own worldview and philosophy and premises and conclusions, none of those theologians or philosophers, at least the ones that I have read, can say anything negative about Edith. They all laud the love that she gave to them because she prayed for them. She cared for them. She fed them nutritionally and spiritually. When Francis Schaeffer became so famous and they were traveling all over the world, it was Edith who would meet maids at hotels, who would give them her personal phone number, who would invite them to their home where they were staying, who would open up her arms to anyone who had any need whatsoever. She lived this life of love and the belief she had in the work of the Holy Spirit by creating spaces where people can feel that they are made in the image of God, their worldviews began to crumble. Whatever frameworks they had, they began to fall because the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit, while we're interacting with each other, he's interceding on us. And that is the beautiful story of Liabri. 
a safe shelter for people to share so the Holy Spirit can show up. I hope that you would read the book, Liabri, or read the book, The Tapestry by Edith Schaefer. She's a brilliant author, but she was a prominent woman of love. And she led so many people to Christ in a very postmodern world. And I think her message, her methodology is worth looking at today.